All right, thank you for your patience on that. All right, so again, I'm Dr. John Hughes. I'm a doctor of osteopathic medicine. What that means is I'm attempting to address the whole body in my practice, not just the, the, the physical aspects of the body, but the heart, mind, soul, uh, as well as the emotional, spiritual components of the, of the body. I'm from Atlanta, Georgia. I grew up with a father who was an inspiring dentist. I believe he's listened to this now. So thank you again, Dr. John A. Hughes, Sr. I went to osteopathic school in college in Arizona and graduated in 2007. 2009, I moved to Colorado. I started Aspen Integrative Medicine, which is an integrative medicine practice focused on uh, treating patients in a whole holistic way. Uh, in 2014, I started a brain injury treatment company called TBI Therapy, uh, primarily focused at the, on the innovative uh, regenerative aspects of traumatic brain injury. Learning objective. What we want to know today is what really is a traumatic brain injury? A lot of us think we know what a traumatic brain injury is, but what is actually happening in, at the cellular level? So this is what I'm really wanting everybody to understand, probably more importantly than even what hyperbaric medicine does. Secondly, what is hyperbaric oxygen therapy? What is it? How do we understand that? How do we understand that as, as oxygen? What is oxygen really doing at the cellular level? What is it doing for brains and in general? And what is it doing for brain injuries? How does hyperbaric oxygen therapy help traumatic brain injuries? What causes a brain injury? A lot of us think we have good ideas about this, but there's a couple different types of brain injuries. Or very simple one that is easy to understand is loss of oxygen and anoxic brain injury. This could be due to carbon monoxide poisoning, could be due to choking, it doesn't have to be necessarily due to somebody getting hit in the head and anything like that. It's, it's a loss of perfusion of blood to the brain. You can see Bart Simpson suffering from one of these right now. It's a chemical brain injury. A chemical brain injury is what happens when we use drugs. This is why saying no to drugs was important. So we don't want to damage those tiny little neurons in our in our brain. Heroin, cocaine, whatever else, alcohol, cigarettes, those can all damage your brain. This can be a chemical brain injury. So very, very careful. And what those what those ultimately are doing, those chemicals, they're causing oxidative stress. So it does come back to oxidative injury. What is a traumatic brain injury? Blunt force or blast trauma. If you think about getting hit in the head with a baseball, soccer ball football, getting hit in the head with somebody else's head or some other object, that's a traumatic brain injury. What is actually happening in that? Another thing that can cause a traumatic brain injury is a blast. You don't have to get hit in the head at all. You can just be standing near a, a bomb that blows up. Just the concussive blast force can actually cause an injury. This is what we're seeing with military veterans. Do you have these symptoms? By the way, uh, Megan Haynes, my partner in, in this business, has actually created a lot of these beautiful diagrams. And this is not me and my my responsibility. But what we're seeing with traumatic brain injury is, is something very unique. A lot of patients get diagnosed with some of these conditions. Depression, PTSD, anxiety, irritability. Those are some of the most common psychological changes with traumatic brain injury. The answer may not be antidepressants, may not be anxiolytics, it may not be drugs to solve this. It may not be a mental problem, it may be a, a very physical, neurological health problem, not just a psychological. When we see these all together, mental decline, memory decline, cognitive function issues, confusion, fatigue, fatigue, loss of energy is probably one of the other big, big symptoms lots of um, smell or seizures. Those are all photosensitivity. And that's just light sensitivity. Uh, all of these can be very um, indicative of a brain injury. So if you have some of these symptoms, the degree of which you have them and express them can also be indicative of what type of injury. Is this a mild, moderate, or severe traumatic brain injury? What is happening in a brain injury? And I think this is probably the most important message to get along um, and with, with a uh, brain injury. And it's a concussion or a brain injury, a mild brain injury is what a concussion is. 
is a metabolic crisis. This is not my analogy or determination or definition. This is a guy named Robert Cantu, who is an MD, uh, who is an expert in this, this field. He says in a very uh, simple manner that the brain is in a metabolic crisis and a concussion. Potassium ions from inside the cell is going extracellular. Calcium ions are going intracellular. Neurotransmitters widely release in a chaotic manner. It takes energy to pump that potassium pack and put the neurotransmitters back on so the cell can function. This is Robert Cantu, MD. Fascinating, probably love this quote more than any other quote in the uh, traumatic brain injury um, world. What this helps us understand is that when you have a brain injury, everything is in disarray. Everything that we look at as far as uh, looking at a cellular level is gone crazy. What that means is that normally potassium ions, for example, are supposed to stay inside the cells. That's part of what helps us have energy. Calcium ions aren't supposed to be going intracellular as much, and neurotransmitters are supposed to be released in a very organized, non-chaotic matter. So it takes a lot of energy to put all that back together, and that's what we have with the brain injury. Some people would even call it a hypermetabolic state. Um, so my analogy with this is if you have a lab and this is a well-working lab, all's in place, all the chemicals, all the instruments are there. You get a brain injury, it's like taking a hammer to the lab or a bomb, blowing it all up. So there you go. Now we're jumping to Corvettes. This analogy came along, and if you guys have an answer to this, oh, I do see a question here. Uh, uh, one of the uh, participants says, can you help stroke survivors? I will get to that question at the very end of this lecture, which will be in about 12 minutes, maybe less. So what gives a Corvette's engine the most power? Anybody who's ever ridden in a Corvette, you probably have felt a good bit of power under your, under your engine. Is it, in the engine and under your under your feet or in front of you, what makes that Corvette just lift off the ground when you when you step on the gas pedal? Is it the gasoline? Is it the oil or the supercharger? This analogy came along when I was talking to my girlfriend's stepdad. His name is Charlie, and we were cruising along on some back roads, of course, at 160 miles an hour. And I said to Charlie, "So what makes your car so fast? Why is it that?" When you step on the gas pedal and go down the road, this car just seems to, to take off. And he said, well, what it's got, John, is something called a supercharger. And I said, well, what is that? I know what it, I know what turbo does. Turbo blows gasoline into the engine. What does a supercharger do? And he's like, well, a supercharger blows oxygen into the engine, blows air into the engine. And you can see what's happening here. You're compressing this air. And you're driving it into turbines in the engine and making it work, you know, even even more effectively than normal engines would do. So it's not a small or inexpensive thing to add to your car, but pretty fascinating what it can do. Like my car doesn't jump up to 160 miles an hour like Charlie's Corvette. So the analogies, getting back to brains here, what it gives the human brain the most power. So if we think about gasoline and fuel, kind of like sugar, fat is kind of like what makes the, the brain or the engine run well, you know, makes those pistons run well. It's like oil. What is pressure? What is the pressurized oxygen? So that's that's like the supercharger. That's that's like the hyperbaric chamber. So we'll get to that in just a minute. But what gives the human brain the most power, just like the Corvette's engine, is the pressurized oxygen. That's the magic of this whole discussion. So how do we heal the metabolic crisis of the brain? We have to give it pressurized oxygen. So what does a brain injury need to heal? Just like we alluded to, here we come, the analogies, <laughs> pressurized oxygen. That's, that's the game. If you want to get metabolic crisis healed, if you want to give the brain more energy, there's nothing more important than this. What is hyperbaric oxygen therapy? What are we doing in a hyperbaric oxygen tank? Medical grade chamber. What you have in a medical grade chamber is 
just like a supercharger. You're taking air or oxygen, 100% oxygen, compressing it in a very unique, confined space with a patient in there. So it's kind of like diving. You're taking this patient to a, a very pressurized state, a lower atmosphere, a, high, a higher atmospheric pressure, and uh, would would be in a dive chamber at a lower um, altitude, for example. So it's a pressurized chamber. There's 100% oxygen in the chamber, or you breathe that in a mask. It's approved by the American Medical Association, FDA, and Medicare. And it's primarily used for wound care, radiation injuries, skin healing, or diving accidents. However, what we now know is that the military is approving hyperbaric oxygen for PTSD as well as traumatic brain injury. And it's been used in scientific studies around the world for many patients with traumatic brain injuries. Why? Why is hyperbaric oxygen working so well? So I'll just give you a little more description. This is a young patient. He seems very relaxed and at peace. What is he getting in here? He's getting oxygen, much, much more oxygen than he could, he could breathe outside the chamber. He's also enjoying a beautiful TV show, relaxing. He's getting 10 to 15 times as much oxygen as he, as he would normally be able to get. So what does oxygen do? And that concentration, it's a concentrated dose, goes in, dissolves all in, in all the body's fluids. So why is it so cool and what it does? It can help heal injuries at a deep, deep cellular level. The brain, bones, it can help these injuries heal in a way that no other therapy can help. Oxygen flows to areas in need of circulation. So feet, toes, other injuries that don't have much circulation, scar tissue, oxygen can help get in and help heal those. We often see patients with uh, radiation-induced cystitis. We put them in the chamber and it helps get rid of the, the microwaved tissue, basically, um, from radiation um, due, to, due to cancer, for example, that patients may have received. What else does hyperbaric oxygen do? It enhances white blood cells and creates helps create new blood vessels. Having all that oxygen helps solve this metabolic crisis wherever it is, not only in the brain, but in other parts of the body. Doing that increases the immune system and white blood cells. What does it do in the brain, specifically? It's a fun little animation, guy with the head. Induces neuroplasticity. What does neuroplasticity mean? Neuroplasticity is a pretty modern terminology that's come out and just become accepted in the medical community probably in the past 10 years or so. But very simply, if you can remember this, neurons that wire together, fire together. So what we know now is that neurons can change. At one time, we thought they were stagnant, but they didn't ever really heal. They would grow maybe at a very, very slow rate, but now we know that they can actually change. A lot of traumatic brain injury treatments are actually develop, are developed and focused on neuroplasticity of the brain. This is more the software component of the brain. But remember, neurons are not stagnant. They're not solid state. They're plastic. They can, they can change. So hyperbaric oxygen improves that changing ability to change. Increases tissue oxygenation. We discussed that creates new capillary networks. Because when we have new, more oxygen in the area, the, the brain wants to take that oxygen and put it in the right places to heal. So it's creating new capillaries to, to drive blood, which carries the oxygen to the areas of injury. Restores blood supply, makes sense, and increases stem cells in the blood. Stem cells in the blood has been the primary focus of what my regenerative therapy for traumatic brain injury has been over the past several years. We're gonna talk about that just a little bit more. Hyperbaric oxygen in adult stem cells. Two hours in a hyperbaric oxygen tank gives you three times the amount of stem cells in your blood. So circulating in your blood, there's these little tiny stem cells uh, that can increase the amount of uh, ability to heal of your, of your body. If you're not using stem cells with hyperbaric oxygen, you're missing out because those stem cells in your blood, whatever kind of stem cells you use, when you when you increase it with hyperbaric oxygen, are going to help everything heal in your body. Fascinating thing is, and this isn't my study, this is University of Pennsylvania study, 
20 sessions in a hyperbaric oxygen tank at two atmospheres gives you 800% more stem cells. Think about that, 800% stem cells floating around your blood. These are pluripotent stem cells, which basically means they can turn into any kind of tissue. They're also known as very small embryonic-like stem cells that are designed to help you heal. So fascinating work as far as stem cells. We can extract these stem cells, place them directly into the brain through the blood, bypassing the blood-brain barrier through the nose. That's the whole subject of another talk down the road. But the most important thing about hyperbaric oxygen and adult stem cells is we, we can get so many more after using several sessions of hyperbaric oxygen. Stem cells, what do they do? They're cell signaling molecules in the brain and in the body. Any damaged tissue that has uh, inflammation will secrete little signaling molecules. Those signaling molecules in combination with some other growth factors help guide stem cells to the areas of injury. So that's why we use them. If you don't use stem cells uh, directly or you know you don't get a stem cell treatment, use hyperbaric oxygen to upregulate them and you'll, you'll be getting the right amount of stem cells. The fascinating thing is when we take the stem cells from the blood and take them directly into the tissues, we can get even more of a benefit. In my opinion, stem cells from the blood are the, the most essential component to healing nerve and, and brain tissue. Long term, at least. This is our protocol. We like patients, if they can, with hyperbaric oxygen to get at least 10 to 20 hyperbaric oxygen treatments before they get a stem cell infusion. And then they'll get 10 or 20 uh, hyperbaric oxygen treatments in a medical grade facility um, after the stem cell. So what are we doing before? We're upregulating the amount of stem cells. You know, 20 hyperbaric uh, treatments will give you 800% more stem cells. After they, then we'll extract those from the blood. After they get the treatment, we'll give them 10 to 20 more, that's going to nurture those stem cells. It's going to give them more growth factors, more capillaries after that treatment to help it help those stem cells heal. Stem cells are interesting in the fact that as you as you create more and you and you start placing them into areas of damaged tissue, they start having a party and they want to invite all their friends. Stem cells are like little babies. They get all excited. They need a little attention. So adult cells, other growth factors, other cell signaling molecules start going to that area and, and creating a bigger party. And that's that, that party is ultimately the healing. That's about two months of treatment. It takes about two months to do this when you know medical grade treatment. Some people do it in less time, maybe a month. But that's the first month. The, the long game for is really the key in the brain injury. This is not a month long treatment. This is probably a nine month or even a year long treatment. So if you just treat one time with hyperbaric oxygen, you know, 30, 40 treatments, it's not enough. The long game is really to do hyperbaric oxygen five days a week at least. And you do this, if, if you don't have access to a medical grade facility, do this one month before you do stem cells. And then you keep doing it for up to nine months or even a year afterwards. The key is consistency. And you're getting, if you have a traumatic brain injury, you have a condition where you haven't been able to heal from another form of injury, you've got to, you've got to have the oxygen to do that. Your brain doesn't rest. Just sitting here talking to you, my brain's probably using 20 to 25% of the oxygen it inhales. I'm not running. I'm not walking. I'm not hiking. Right now, I'm just sitting here talking. It's using a lot of energy. So just telling somebody to rest after a brain injury, it's just not going to work. If you don't give them hyperbaric oxygen, most patients aren't going to heal very quickly, or some patients will never heal at all. Clinical results. From the studies, what we're seeing with clinical results with traumatic brain injury and hyperbaric oxygen is improved cognitive status. These are numbers, data that sophisticated scientists have come up with, and they've shown this in, in the results. Improved memory performance, improved quality of life studies. Solid evidence for all of this just with hyperbaric oxygen uh, as a treatment for TBI. What do Meyer patients report. When combined with the regenerative therapies of platelet-rich plasma and stem cells, hyperbaric oxygen, almost everybody reports improved energy, improved sleep, less headache pain, improved moods. 
or they may have been a little quick at the end. But overall energy is what we want to get with a traumatic brain injury, and that's where hyperbaric oxygen, combined with some other regenerative therapies like stem cells, can really benefit. I have a few questions. I'm going to answer those. If anybody else has questions, feel free to ask those right now. You can just type those in, and I'll, I'll, I'll answer them to my best ability. One of the questions is, can you help stroke survivors? The answer to that is, is yes. However, I have helped, I have helped several patients with um, strokes um, using hyperbaric oxygen as well as using autologous, um, which just means it comes from the same person and given back to the same person, uh, plasma. So I've taken their blood, I've spun out what's called the plasma uh, and the growth factors from that blood, and I've put it back in. We do know from studies that patients who've been injected into your arterial, into the, into the arteries with strokes have actually had less clotting and improved um, perfusion in the areas where those um, strokes were done. The, the studies are out there. If you look at strokes and TBI, uh, and, and I'm sorry, strokes and hyperbaric oxygen, they do show improvements. Why it's not paid for or not a Medicare treated um, condition is primarily, a, I would say, a business um, issue. I, I don't think there's any science to, to support no not using hyperbarics. Most stroke patients, they're getting a stroke because either embolic or hemorrhagic, but most patients would would can benefit from having increased perfusion. If you think about it in a very logical way after what I've just talked about, having increased capillary growth is what most stroke patients need either to repair the capillary that's been damaged or to, to create anastomosis to afford a new, um, new capillary to, to, to heal the brain. What is stabilized or does stabilized oxygen, liquid oxygen help is the other question. Uh, that's a very good question. Stabilized liquid oxygen is usually for, sold in a form of di what's called dioxychlor. You can buy this in a food called, uh, a supplement called cell food. I have no problem really ultimately with small doses of that. I, I think you can't, doxychlor is, um, it's kind of like hydrogen peroxide. It's releasing oxygen. The only danger is it's, it's, it can create a little bit of oxidative stress on the system. Um, I have, like I said, I have no problem with how well it, 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 it works in the body. However, it's not going to do anything similar or the same as a hyperbaric oxygen treatment as far as a um, driving oxygen deep into the system. It's not, it's not perfusing the body uh, in, in deep into the system like a, like a pressurized oxygen, hyperbaric oxygen tank or hyperbaric oxygen chamber would do. So if you guys have any other questions, really appreciate it. Otherwise, thank you so much for your time and for listening to this lecture on hyperbaric oxygen and traumatic brain injury. And I'm trying to stop streaming here. Oh, one more question. I have a question that says, hi, I sustained multiple head injuries in a short time period. That was four plus years ago. I still have symptoms and I've tried lots of therapies. I guess the, the question, and I can answer ask this to you if you'd like. I have a question about MHBOT. So I don't, I don't know what M my uh, maybe mild HBOT is that and that might be home hyperbaric chambers uh feel free to, to throw up your question uh if you, if you have a direct question about that if you want to know does does a home hyperbaric chamber home hyperbaric chambers are rated to an fda yeah soft yeah that's what you're asking about mild hyperbaric chambers they're rated to a level of Four PSI, uh, that might also be known as 1.3 ATA. What you get when you use those chambers by themselves without an oxygen concentrator is about one and a half to two times as much oxygen as you would normally inhale in a concentrated way. When you use those chambers with an oxygen concentrator, you get five to six times as much oxygen. And you can use a concentrator that will take ambient air and concentrate it to 90 to 98% oxygen. 
so that you're breeding a very high concentration of oxygen while you're in that chamber. A lot of a lot of practitioners, especially the hyperbaric oxygen centers, have have made these chambers irrelevant. And for wound care, or for skin conditions, or even stroke, they're not as helpful. But for cognitive improvement from a traumatic brain injury, they can be very important because you only need a couple of times more oxygen to actually improve. If I, if you're going to get five or six times more oxygen, yeah, you're not getting 10 times as much oxygen or 15 times as much oxygen, but you don't necessarily need that. You need five to six times more oxygen. And uh, that should get, and it's a long game. You know, it's doing the chamber an hour, hour and a half a day, five to seven days a week, at least for three months. And most patients do get a lot of benefit from those soft chambers. The patients I see that do the best do do really well with soft chambers and they stay on them. Uh, we have a relationship with a company called Summit to See. We, can, we help a lot of patients get soft chambers on a regular basis just so they can continue to use these treatments. Any other questions out there? Any further questions? Feel free to email us at uh, tbitherapy.com. We have an online form. You can contact us with any questions. We're glad to help and, and tell you more about these treatments and help you get a soft chamber if you don't have one.